live from Amisham. It's on the new network. Sorry, network. Anyway, so nothing's happening, so maybe I'm not. I don't know. Hello, good evening, and welcome. This is me. I've got two watching, apparently. I just haven't got anything that I can see. Strange. Oh, there I am. Oh, no, look. Hey, right right in front of me. You can hear me, probably. Right, so I'm going to turn the monitor off on the sound. Because I know it's working now. And um, boom. there we go. Right, sorted. And I shall now endeavour to say hello to people. So, hello. Is there anybody there? Or is it all an illusion? Did the Matrix work today? Ah, oh, Wasim, hello. How are you doing? Nice to see you here. And uh, just to let you know, Kelvin won't be along tonight because he's working, which is a, which is a shame because he's always good company. And um, I was actually, I was actually quite annoyed. Well, annoyed. That's not the right word. Now, how should I put this? Um, I was just now trying to get. OB, whatever it is called, OBS, to work for, I'm just trying to cover up the, the little bits and pieces you don't want to see, <laughs> yeah. um, bear with, I was just trying to get OBS to work, and it doesn't, which is really annoying, because I set it up, I did everything what they said, and it didn't work, so, you know, what I had planned isn't going to work. Well, not, not the way I'd planned it anyway. I shall just have to do something slightly different. Anyway, so let me see. What have we got here? Um, got a, Has anybody noticed that my last live went extremely well? It's had over 200 views, I believe. Um, let me just have a quick look. I know I've got a look there, so do forgive me for looking to the side but it's a case of that's where that's where all the doings is actually i could move my doings over to there because then i'd be able to see what i'm doing maybe no i won't do that i don't want to don't want to click the wrong button i've have enough trouble getting this thing to work in the first place as in you do what it says and it doesn't work which is never fun so let's have a look and see if i do that i'm presuming i'm still there and I can then look up and say, um, click on that one, which I would have shown you, but I can't. And it says, yes, right, it says, I had 185 views since last week, which is wonderful. Thank you very much, people who have watched and have come back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do appreciate it. It's nice. Yes. That's what I thought we'd see. That's, that's um, something like, let's have a look. That's um, the one before that. Um, is it? Uh, no, hang on. I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Uh, yeah, 189 actually last week. 52 the week before, 65 the week before that, 39, 45, 83, one of them. So um, you know, it's going in the right direction. That's all I can say. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now all we've got to do is get people to subscribe. Um, I know there are there are some friends of the channel who are presumably subscribed, and uh, they maybe they even hit the, the little bell icon. M may I just take a minute, just have a scratch, and um, just just to sort of try and tell people why subscribing is quite important. What it does, and this is not known by everybody, but it's known by a lot of people, is it costs you nothing. But what the algorithm, the really infamous or famous or wonderful or awful, whichever <laughs> direction you're looking at it from, what the algorithm does is it says, oh, that person liked that channel enough to click on that little button. And in fact, he liked it enough to click on the bell as well. So we shall make sure that he sees some of what that channel's putting out not everything but some of it with the with the bell it means that uh, they'll, they'll actually flag you when anything happens which is useful which is nice 
But what it also means is that that uh, algorithm will then look at what's happening and say, oh, now if he liked it, I wonder if the guy over there who watches basically the same channels as this one, whether he might like it. I, I will show him the option. Now, the guy over there might be somebody totally different who has never come in from that direction of looking at whatever this channel's about. So you know, maybe he's never come into cassettes, but he's actually interested in cassettes, for instance, or in TV or whatever, engines, um, VHS video recorders, whatever it may be. And so he's come in from that direction and he's never actually stumbled across my channel yet. But because he's watched a lot of the stuff that the people who have subscribed to my channel watch, YouTube will say to him, yeah, have you seen this one? And they'll bring it up on the home channel and on the recommendations. And then he'll think, oh, and he'll go and have a look. So the end result is that the channel then grows. Now, I don't know whether people realize this, but people on YouTube at my channel level don't make a lot of money. In fact, people on YouTube at my channel level don't make any money. It costs us money to make these videos. It costs us money in several ways. And I'll just very quickly explain how. Um, if you're going to have a successful YouTube channel, you need something like TubeBuddy or um, VidIQ. Now, I'm not pushing them as such, but I do use, I, I have used both, and I, I currently use one of them. And kind of long story short, that costs £30 a month to have, or, or roundabouts. You also have to buy cameras and, and all these things, and you have to, well, if you're not cameras, you have to buy phones. Um, you have to buy tripods and you have to buy stands and you have to buy all sorts of things. You have to have computers, all of which actually adds up to quite a lot. And um, I'm not I'm not going to be telling any, any lies or any secrets that I shouldn't tell. My income from YouTube, since it went monetized, is, um, uh, I, th I think I've made 80 quid. I've bought in 80 quid. I've been paid once. I've got paid 80 quid. That's for two years' hard work up until the point where they paid me, and they paid me 80 quid. And since that payment, I've made, I've bought in, as in there is on my account, another 20 quid, which is for two months. Um, no, six weeks. So if I carry on doing this, which I, which I intend to, then in about three weeks' time, I can expect to have on my account 40 quid. They won't give it to me because it's not enough to make it worthwhile paying me. So I'll then have to wait another month and a half at the current income to get the other 20 quid and because they won't pay you at less than 60 quid. And then I'll get, so, you know, I should get about another 80 quid. So basically I'm making about £19 a month income and i'm spending 30 pound a month on on the software to be able to make that 19 pounds and that doesn't include the visit, video editing software and all that sort of thing so i'm not trying to i'm not trying to say that i'm wonderful or anything stupid like that i know i am no what, what i'm trying to say is if you're getting something out of my videos if you even if it's only to take the pee out of them i don't care um everything i do I do know in full well that somebody's going to say, oh, he's wrong, or that's not right, or, oh, did, is that really true? Well, that's fine. Everything I do, I research, and it, I'm more than happy to, to debate anything that I've put on my channel. But if I don't get the subscribers, I can't really afford to do it. I'm actually paying 10, 12, 13 pounds a month plus equipment to do these videos. And um, it would just be nice if if a few more people could see them. Um, you know, a few. Now, people like Techmoan and the Westlife, they get lots of people seeing their videos. But that's because people subscribe. And because people subscribe, more people subscribe. There's a thing, interesting thing about uh, YouTube. If they show a video to, to one person this week, and that person says he likes it or whatever, they will show it to seven people next week. Show it to 100 people this week, they'll show it to 700 next week. 
but the people need to actually interact. If I get people putting comments on, be it love it, hate it, you're wrong, you're right, or whatever, then that will actually mean that the videos will get out there. The um, retention on my channel has gone really high. I've got a, I've had 50% more, um, no, 18% more viewers this this month than last month, which is nice, but the views are still pretty low. Um, I've got cha I've got videos on my channel which have got um, four times higher click through rates than ones that have done well, and that but because the algorithm doesn't see that people like them, the few that people who have seen it, it's come up as being eight, nine, ten percent click through rate. And I've got videos that have got a 1% click-through rate that have done better because I don't know why. And it's it's all down to timing and things. So, you know, please, it's a little bit of, I'm going on a little bit, I suppose, 11, 11 minutes. But please, if you do get anything out of a video, or even if you just want to take the pee out of me, click subscribe, like, put it around, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, in the meantime, that's enough of that. Right. Well, Seem, thank you very much. You're still there. Um, is there anybody else out there? Let's have a look. I, you see, I can't tell on here because it, oh, you know, there's three people, it says, and I've got one like, and it wasn't me. So <laughs> there you go. Right. What to talk about today? Anybody got any ideas what they'd like to talk about today? Put it in the chat and I'll see if I can answer it. Uh, if not, then what I should do, I will. I've, I've threatened this in the past. <laughs> oh great we seeing thank you um and uh, yes I, I may your channel go up, onwards and upwards and thank you the i was interested in yeah uh, no hang on let's, let's try let's try and get the words to come out in some sort of order that makes sense um the short i put up yesterday or the day before whenever it was um it yeah tell you what it all runs into one because you're busy and it just sort of you know monday wednesday i think i put it up monday so monday i'll put it up uh the short i put up about the the tapes that i got sent by a friend of the channel they are going on to be um tested and do you know what i'll be i will be unless anybody tells me otherwise i will be the first channel to actually do uh, a recording uh, a fox recording the Masters Fox review, where you can actually tell whether it was any good or not, rather than just somebody saying, oh, yes, on my hour, it sounded wonderful. Or, no, they're not as good as they could be, or whatever, because we'll actually have figures. We'll actually have noise and all the rest of it, figures. And uh, hopefully it, it should come out okay. And there's an interesting, I don't want a spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I've got a video coming out hopefully this evening. Uh, or tonight or early tomorrow uh, i haven't finished it yet but i'm putting it together and it's um it's about the tudor tape again or oh. but actually it's quite interesting because the results throw most of what most people think out of the window um you know i'm a little bit of a radical thinker or actually i'm not radical what, what i am is simplistic one one Plus one equals what do we reckon? One plus one equals two. Two. See, I'm British. I have to make sure which way around to get the fingers. And if you don't understand that, then that's fine. But if you do understand that, then I think I've got it right. Um, yeah, one plus one equals two. Simplistic. Um, that's the way I tend to be. It it amazes me how people get themselves tied up in knots and things but i have found something absolutely astounding out and i'm going to put it in the next video your the title hopefully at this point it's undecided exactly what it is but it's something going to be along the lines of well everybody's got it wrong including me and uh, we'll see how we go from there it should be a smash hit it could be if people like subscribe and do the rest of it we won't go down there again but it, it should be in, it should be 
Um, well, earth shattering to some people. I was going to show, I see, I, ha I had everything set up today to, I had o OBS set up and it said it was all going to work. And I clicked on it and it said, yeah, it's going to work. And I clicked on it and it said, no, YouTube isn't receiving the data, even though I'd gone through it all 10 minutes previously. So I will sort that out hopefully between now and another time and uh, see if we can get that working. But this one, um, have you seen the meme? There's a meme going around, and it's a picture of an audio cassette. In fact, it's very, very similar to one of these. And yeah, you, you will. That, in case you're new to the channel, that's a, that's an audio cassette. Uh, in fact, that's a Harry Pitch audio cassette. Is that there? Yeah, just about. The autofocus is a little bit sluggish on this. Anyway. Um, and there's a meme where somebody's put some tape over the corner of the tape cassette and covered that hole up. And I've got a, a clip from a YouTube, not a YouTube, from a Facebook page where the meme was put on and it says, if you, if you know what this is for, you're old. And there was, because it was on a memories channel, one of these you know, sort of thanks for the whatever. And... Um, so there was hundreds of people. I've seen the memes also been on. It was on uh, cassette decks vintage as well, but uh, everybody got got it right on there. Funnily enough, um, but on this particular memories group, somebody put on that they had seen. Um, they had some. A lot of people were putting on. They're old. They're old. They're old. They're old. So they were, they all knew what it was for. And then there were a few people who said, oh, yes, that's so that you can, you put the tape on to stop it being able to be recorded on. And then uh, some other people said, no, no, no. Anyway, I went on and said, you know, corrected somebody and said, no, you put the tape over there so that you can record on a tape that you wouldn't otherwise be able to record on. And underneath that, somebody put on a, well, it was, I'll see if I can find my phone, actually. I thought I had it with me. Bear with Hmm, back again. Right, but then you knew that because you're watching. Uh, sorry. It's all a bit strange, this sort of thing. No, that wasn't what I was expecting to see either. Um, let's see. Come on. Come on, wake up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find the Facebook. Well, see if I can find that picture or something. No, no that's not going to work. Scrub that. That didn't work. Anyway, what this meme, somebody put up on this thing, and I shall describe it because I've got it on here. And, uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Boom. And it says, um, so somebody put on and said, uh, oh, when you get old, you can, no, hang on. Somebody said, protect content from erasure, which is, which is wrong, of course. So I went on and said, uh, it's the tape corner to allow it to be recorded over. And that person came back and said, ah, oh, when you get old, you can't find the compartments to hold all your trivia. So I went back and said, not a problem. I still use cassettes, so I, so I need to know. Cheers, which I thought was quite nice. I got a, I got a thumbs up for that from the, from the person. And then somebody came on, this chap, and he put my name, of course, that's Facebook for you, in capital letters, W-R-O-N-G. Angry face, 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 angry face. Then written in capital letters, O double P O S I T E. So apparently I was wrong. So I went back onto that channel, onto that group and said, Mr. Man, what do you mean? And he didn't come back. But I then said, let me introduce you to my YouTube channel. And I put a little video of the YouTube channel just scrolling up. And you've seen, well, most of you have seen the, my YouTube channel, otherwise you wouldn't be watching now. But it's got the odd, the odd cassette thing on it. And then I did a link to the YouTube channel. And I didn't hear anymore, but I did get a few likes. 
quite a few likes. But uh, yeah, so the this thing I've been saying to you about various Facebook groups and having to be careful about what what information you get and whatever. Well, is it really necessary to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angry faces, uppercase wrong and uppercase opposite, to make some sort of statement? And the bloke's an idiot because he was wrong, not me. And not only that, he was he was a rude idiot. I don't understand Facebook. I do. I really don't understand why people do things like that and have to be so unpleasant about things. I I have occasionally gone onto Facebook and said, "Are you sure you're correct?" Or you know, "Would you like to expand on that or whatever?" And I've genuinely learned things on Facebook. But I've never gone on and shouted at anybody or been nasty about anything because, you know, although I make sure I um, research things, I always, I always, I mean, there was something I was looking up the other day and I thought, I wonder if my memory of that is correct. You've got to remember, my memory can go, my memory goes back. I've got underpants that are older than some of my viewers. Um I, I've went into the video, well, I went into the electronics industry in 1974. That's a few years ago now. And I, so I can remember when I went into the electronics industry, microprocessors had only just been invented and they were trying to find uses for them. And I remember reading an article about putting them in toasters. You know, the world is full of all sorts of people. Some are idiots, unfortunately. There is nothing you can do but accept them in all aspects of life. Yes, I totally agree with you. We're seeing there. It's just one of those things. But you know, what what I find so annoying about it is that it's these people think that he who shouts loudest is right. So you know, it doesn't work that way. Well, not with me anyway. Um. Yeah. Right. Yeah, my, my memory goes back to well well before uh, they hadn't even invented the home computer when I was in electronics initially. And, I, and the first machines I ever worked on were paper tape punch, punch and um, paper tape readers. Yes, I do that, Wasim. Expect them and ignore them. Yes. I do, except of course I've just spent five minutes talking about them on here. And excuse me, I'll have a quick mouthful. The um, yes, T H E M, well corrected. <laughs> I wish somebody else would come along. No, 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 now that sounds awful, doesn't it? Thank you, Wasim, for being there, and thank you for typing in. It'd just be nice if somebody else joined in as well. Um, but yes, I was looking at something again the other day. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Oh, sugar, I can't do it now. Wasim, did you have a look at the community post I put up? Uh, there was a, a couple of weeks ago, I put up the circuit diagram for the ION tape deck. If you did, then uh, you know, put a message in there. If you haven't, then you might like to go and have a look at some point. Um, it's what I was talking to you the other day about electronics being all in in uh, modules and things. But anyway, that was that. Um, what else was I going to talk about? I've got on here. See, I, I have a I had a folder and I had a, some documents which were of interest, but now I can't get to them. It's annoying. Um, the tapes that I got on that short, by the way, they were there's a couple of type twos. And uh, some a couple of takes have been loaded onto duplicator spools. That's the clear ones, and the the fox. That should be interesting. I really want to go onto that one. But what I am doing at the moment is I'm doing the Tudor. As I say, it's going to be it's going to be um, an interesting result on that one because I did not expect. You know, you've heard people say, "Yeah, you know, you're not going to believe this," or you're not going to want to miss this. This one, you're not going to want to miss for the simple reason that 
I was expecting a different result to what I got. And, you know, um, I don't tend to be disappointed, and I'm not disappointed, but I am surprised. It was something I thought might happen, but it wasn't something I expected to happen. And, uh, yeah, the reason I was talking about that, um, that circuit diagram for you, Seam, is because if you were... Well, if you were interested, I could always send it out to you. But um, there's on that diagram there are the EQ, sorry, EQ, and type type tape bias settings for various tapes and things. And that sounds really really complicated, but actually there's a wire goes up from the bottom where there's a multiple connector, which I think is just about on the picture that's on the screen, goes up to about two thirds up the way up the diagram splits off and triggers a transistor that transistor turns on a capacitor and that is all that's involved in going from 70 microseconds to 120 microseconds it is that simple it is not it is not actually magic but it can be magical which is something that's quite quite amazing to me anyway um now, the other thing I said I was going to talk about was TVs. I've been watching a lot of stuff on a very good channel called Black Black Belt Barrister. And I found another one called, uh, was it Johnny Concarni, um, which are, they're talking about TV licenses and things. I think I might have mentioned a, few, uh, a while ago that um, you can actually get, you, you, if you... Are intent if you're meant to have a color license, then you, you you're stuck. But if you, when when we rented out black and white TVs, we used to disable the color demodulator so that it could only produce a black and white picture, and we could, then we could feed those out to the little old ladies that didn't want color, and they could they could actually watch their favorite programs on this nice 22 inch color TV in black and white with no option but to be in black and white and therefore only have to have a black and white license which is about a third of the price which is quite good ah you've seen the black belt barrister yes he's very good isn't he with his uh he's very matter of fact and it's exactly the sort of person that i like because when he says something he means it and his one he's been doing just recently, as I say, there's a lot, lot of stuff on TV licenses. And the uh, the Johnny Con Carney chappy, uh, yeah, Chili John Carney, he's very much into just trying to get people to not have licenses if they don't want them. And it was interesting how the two are interacting at the moment because the uh, Black, Black Belt Barrister put one on saying, if you do this, you can get yourself in this trouble and then and he put and then the con carney chap he put one on saying stop sending me emails just because black belt barrister says it's a problem doesn't mean that i've got, i've got it wrong which of course he he hadn't what he was saying was that when he says something it's what you and i in the street would say but you have to understand that when the black belt barrister says something he is talking about the law as in this is what can happen and I thought it was interesting. He was saying that you know, Black Belt Barrister was saying that 50,000 people are done every year for TV license evasion, of which I think he said 98. Is it either 98 or 82? Anyway, a huge amount of them are done and are prosecuted. So um, if you're going to not have a TV license, make sure you don't fall foul of the law. And if you're going to have a TV license, I happen to have a TV license because. Uh, well, over there, we've got, if you went around my house, it's, it's ridiculous. We've got one TV that's a TV in the in the kitchen, we've got a TV in the living room, we've got TV, got TV in our bedroom, we've got TV, got a plasma in our bedroom, we've got a TV in Little Ones bedroom, and I think there's probably a couple of monitors. We've got monitors in the gym, we've got if you're talking screens, um, ooh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got two, boom, boom, here, yeah. eight, nine. My wife's got a ten, two there, 11, 12. I've got about 14 screens, not including phones and tablets. 
Uh, it is ridiculous. When I was a kid, back in 1967, I got my first black and white TV, which was actually a hand-me-down from the, from the parents because they, they got another TV. And so I had this, this and it was a KB TV, and it was great. It had valves in it because it was a British TV. It didn't have tubes because it wasn't American, <laughs> but it had valves in it. And the thing about valve TVs was you switch them on and they warmed up, just like starting a fire stick. If you ever notice, you turn you turn the fire stick on, you have to sit and wait for it to warm up. Um, but anyway, you'd, and then it would start. And the wonderful thing about valve or tube TVs in the old days was they would start to roll. They'd come on and they'd start to roll and they'd lock up. Then they'd be all right for about an hour and then they'd start rolling again as, as they went through the stable point. And I used to have to bash it and... My main main memories of that was that uh, the Northern Ireland, um, so basically the week I got the TV, the Northern Ireland troubles kicked off big time, and um, it was it was quite a lot of news was about the, the Northern Ireland troubles. I mean, I ended up going to school. We had the IRA bomb alerts and all the rest of the stuff. I'm not going to be political. It's fact. It's history. Uh, we also had much later on, but before I left school, we had the winter of discontent where the the all the people were on strike and uh, where it was very much a case of there were bodies being piled up at crematoriums and there were huge piles of rubbish in london and on the streets and i I lived in wembley so we had huge piles of rubbish piled up in the parks it was uh, quite quite silly quite ridiculously dangerous i guess but very much like now, um, you know, we've I've, I've seen a lot of these memories ch- groups. Now, this is probably just my sense of humour, but um, I was saying to somebody on one of these groups about a year ago, and they were saying, "Oh, the good old days when Britain was Britain and it was all wonderful." And uh, what well, you mean, um, the, you you would rather go back to all the problems with Northern Ireland and the Vietnam War and. Uh, all the strikes and all the trouble and all that sort of thing, you know, rather than living in the country you're living in now. And they sort of, oh, well, it wasn't really all that bad. And yes, it was. I can assure you it was not nice. And uh, all these people who reminisce about scraping the ice off the inside of the windows and uh, putting coats on their on their beds because they, they were cold at night. Um, if you've been watching the news lately, you'll find that there's not a lot different at the moment. And uh, if you look at the, the reason why, it's basically down to a lack of money and the cost of living crisis. Uh, it, it, it is it is getting quite worrying. It's another problem. Uh, the winter of discontent was um, 78, uh, no, sorry, 68, 69. Um, no, hang on. I left school in 73. Uh, so therefore it would have been about 1970. Um, I could look it up. Bear with. I shall just click on on there and type in winter of discontent. And it's, it's actually got a subject of its own and it says, yes, um, the winter of discontent was a period between 1978 and 79, which is not right. So there was a, there was a previous one to that. But yeah, that was the winter of discontent. So what was the one I was on about? So it was the um, grave uh, general. It was the strike. I love the way the technology doesn't always work. Strikes. In the 70s, Let's have a look at that one. Um, because I had I was affected also by the three day week, which is interesting. They literally, um, they did not allow us to, to go to work because they were turning the electricity off. Um, what called three day week in the 1970s? Hello, that's that's it. That was between 1973 and 74, the three day week. That's when I was at work, so therefore the one I'm talking about, where it had all the all the biggest strikes and everything. So we were 
1971, 1970-1973 That's when I was at school with it. And, uh, yes, it was not fun. <sighs> the, um, the end result of all of that was that when the, the Labour came out and then 1980, Margaret Thatcher got in and she was in until 1990 and then they had um, the landslide. No, then you, then you had uh, John Major and then after that, I think there was a landslide and uh, you got Tony Blair and then I think he got in twice. I don't know. It was it was all rather bad, but I mean, you know, these things happen. But what I was getting at though, was people have these funny memories. And, oh, everything was wonderful. It wasn't wonderful. But if you were if you were my age now, which I am, funnily enough. So I'm now oh, sixty odd, sixty five. So 1973. How old was I then? Well, I know how old I was then. I was 13, 14. Um, 19, no, 15, 16. 1974, I got myself a, um, a moped and was one of the first to have the mopeds with the pedals. And that was that was good fun. That was the uh, a Yamaha FS1E. But this was, this was the sort of thing that um, I, as a kid, was only aware of the piles of rubbish. I wasn't aware of all the... The, the people being made redundant and, and all the hard times that people were having because my mum and dad, well, they weren't well off, but they did okay. My dad was an electronic engineer. I think I mentioned it before. He used to work for IBM, so you know, he had a reasonable... But he actually got his job by going to night school and working as a security guard when he was younger. I can remember him doing that in the early 60s. He had to go to, to night school and get qualifications, and then he got a job with IBM. And then he, he, he rose quite high within the tentacles of IBM. And uh, I can remember going to one of the IBM buildings and they had a, what was called a line printer. This is well all before most of your time. But a line printer used to print a line at a time. They, they have a different meaning for it now. But in those days, it used to print a line of, of text. And this thing was A5, no, A4. Or might have been, actually might have been A three. It was in a building. The build the, the room was air conditioned. The the computer, which was called a mainframe, was air conditioned. And this was the fastest printer in the world at the time. And it had the rolls of paper came out on sprockets, and the paper had a guide that was probably oh, three, two and a half foot above the paper dr uh, roller, and it had sort of like a, a, a curved bit over the top and this thing when it's when it was printing out whatever it was printing which would have been for banks and things like that but basically lines of text the paper shot out hit the hit the guide and then curled down it's absolutely amazing it was a fountain of paper and this thing made a noise like a well, I would say like a machine gun but if you if you're into machine guns you know that about things like the Uzi and that which make you know, thousands of rounds a minute. Uh, it, it was one of those sort of noises. It was absolutely amazing. Um, dot matrix in them days. Yes, I think it was dot matrix, but it was really high speed because IBM also invented and produced the um, the golf ball typewriter and the golf ball printer. But this thing was a high speed dot matrix. And yes, it, it shot the paper three foot out of the top of the thing before they tried sending it in the right direction. Have you ever tried? This is something that people don't know. Um, I, I read a lot of stuff on these things. People are talking about um, trying to control tape and stuff. They don't understand how difficult it is to control tape, paper, and rolls of stuff. When I was working for a company called Portal Prompt, in the good old days, back in 1980, um, yeah, I think it was 1980, 1979, something like that. Uh, I got married while I was there. So, yeah, I got married in 1980. So it was 1979, 1970, 78, something like that. Um, we were using what was called a 
script scanner. And what that was was a CCTV camera pointed through a couple of mirrors, through a periscope, straight onto a, a like a till roll. So it was only it was only um, as wide as as a till roll, a wide till roll, but it was a till roll. And that till roll of paper had to go between some fingers that were had little rollers in them, and the paper had to be rolled. And what that did was the camera was looking at the, at the roll of paper, and it had the script for what was being said on the TV. There was a mirror in front of the camera, a, what you call a two-way mirror, but it was a semi-silver mirror. So the camera could see through the mirror, but if you looked at the camera, all you could see was the words on the TV screen, which was hanging underneath the camera. You'll still see it done now. Very The, the just sort of generic name for it is teleprompt. The uh, sort of the Hoover name for it, if you know what I mean by the Hoover name, is uh, AutoQ. That's the, the biggest one in the in the country. But I worked for a company called Portaprompt. And we were the second in the country. And uh, we were a lot smaller than AutoQ. But we did develop the first digital television prompter, which could be networked and could take the script from the actual um, production crew rather than having to type it all in and could actually be fed out to the gallery and everything else. It was great fun working in those days. Uh, but telly when it was, it was when Kenny Everett was on the telly and uh, whodunit programs, quiz programs and things. And... Uh, I was actually involved in, in doing some of that. Morecambe and Wise were on the telly. Now, if you don't know who Morecambe and Wise are, you're not old. <laughs> but if you do know who Morecambe and Wise are, you're either clever or you're you're old. But they were brilliant. And, um, yeah, we used to have to move between – we had to scroll the paper and we had to sort of rewind it and things. And getting a – it was that wide, so what's that? That's about – let me see – I'm, I'm bilingual, so that's two inches, or about fifty centimeters, millimeters, not for centimeters. Oh wow, no, that's that, that. Yeah, yeah, about fifty millimeters. So two inches wide or so. So the the script was written on there. Camera looked at it, and that was then projected onto the front of the TV camera, so that the the presenter could read it. And trying to scroll that paper through evenly so that it didn't wrinkle and so that because literally the machine had to just spin it like you would do a tape and it was so difficult getting the tensions right and because as soon as you put a bit of drag on one side the other side would, would carry on trying to go at the same speed as it originally was and so you'd, you'd it'd all bunch up with either wrinkle or it would fly out and this is all the same sort of problems that you get with videotapes and you get with reel-to-reel -reel tapes and you get with um with cassette tapes, but people don't understand how these things are so, so well, they're run of the mill now. I mean, well, you don't even see tapes now, do you? It's all, it's all done on one of these now or on a phone. But in those days, it was done on, on trying to get stuff to roll. And so that's why I was saying that that printer shooting that paper out was actually a major thing. And if you've ever tried, <laughs> If you've ever tried using a photocopier in an industrial situation or a, or a big printer, you'll know full well that the, the most common shout is, whoops, printer's jammed or photocopier's jammed. And uh, then you hear the slamming of the drawers and the cursing and the screw, screwing up of the paper and things. It is incredibly difficult to get paper to go from A to B under control at a correct speed and without wearing out what you're rubbing it on. If you've ever tried rubbing your fingers across a sheet of paper, you'll know how rough it is. And, uh, yeah, great fun. What else was I going to talk about? Um, let's see, got anything, to, got anything to add or to you'd like to have comment on? Um, I keep on going, um, don't want to go, um. It's just, just you know, it's, it's difficult trying to think of things that would, would actually interest anybody. Or nobody. I'm everywhere and nowhere, baby. That's where it's at. I, I threatened you with singing. And that's about as best as I can do. Oh, I've got to hear it myself, so I'm not going to. What was that OCR you mentioned? 
I don't know. Optical character reader. Um, the oh the the um, what when I was back when I first went on the paper tape. Yeah, we used to the punch tapes and things. Is that what you're referring to? I'm not. I've. I'm multitasking. I'm going to have another drink. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for. Let me let me type this. Uh, I'll do it on here. So, uh, not sure. There we go. Something you mentioned you were going to cover at the beginning of the live feed. Oh. Um, yes. You know the trouble is when you're doing these things, you, you stick it all in. You, you stick it all in your head, and you stick it on. In my case, I've got it on the screen in front of me, and then you forget it. <laughs> it's called getting old. No, it's not. It's just called trying to trying to do more than one thing at once. Um, the uh, I was talking about the printed circuit diagram, and well, I was also going to the. Um, <sighs> yeah. No, I totally run out now. That, that, that's totally thrown me. I did have a couple of other items I was going to talk about. Uh, TV, hi-fi, video. Oh, now, have you seen the latest Westlife, Fee Westlife video, which has got quite an interesting deck he's got on there. It's a twin, twin cassette. 30 watt amplifier stereo background music machine it's well worth having a look at and it's quite interesting that it's yeah well I won't, I won't do any spoilers for you but it's quite an interesting deck um it's not what you expect it to be and uh he, he, he got it for quite good money but unfortunately it's well it's in america so we're not going to get it Saw an interesting thing yesterday about a guy who bought a motorbike from Amazon America, a uh, big V-twin motorbike. Um, I had a look on Amazon. They, they don't do them over here. But that was that was a bit strange. Um, the other thing I was going to mention was, and I remembered it just now, and now it's gone again. The, oh, yeah. Why do people try and be more clever than they should be? There's a question for you. Oops. I'll play the drums now. I won't do that. Um, I was I was on the another one of the Facebook pages the other day. And I know this is one of my pet hates. And I know it's uh, one of the things that, that uh, wires me up. And it's why I originally started this channel. And a guy... It, it, it makes you wonder why why we bother. Um, the guy put on the channel on on the Facebook page says, "Has anybody seen what, know anything about one of these?" And you'll never guess what it was. I'll give you a clue. It starts with T, and it was brand new, and it's a double deck. So no, it wasn't a pile, and it wasn't one of the one of the um, things. Yeah. Yes, that's it. I, su I suffer from that a lot. Mouth before brain. Yes. Um, yeah, what it was, it was this t 1200. And the guy was asking whether anybody knew anything about them. And this was on a reputable Facebook cassette page. And so you can guess what the first answer was that the, the, the chap got. Um, it went along the lines of, Chinese crap, load of rubbish. Better off buying a a vintage. Better off buying a vintage one, paying less money for it. Overpriced. Blah blah blah. Yes, the TX W twelve hundred. And 
I thought, well, why? <laughs> when you go onto a Facebook page, first of all, you shouldn't really ask a question like what do people think about something because opinions are valid only to the person who makes them. And that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Um, the other thing is that if you ask anybody on a current, and that includes tape heads as well, what they think about the, the current equipment, they will tell you it's crap. And that's not strictly speaking true. I don't know why, but for some reason, you will always get somebody to tell you it's Chinese crap, it's overpriced, blah, blah, blah. And and, and that and that's the first thing that come on. So anyway, I said to the chap, um, I, I just said, you know, have, have a look at this. And a couple of other people, give them credit where credit due, a couple of other people put on there the thing, put on the Westlife Review, and they put on, you know, they don't put on mine for some reason. I have to do that myself. But you've got the Westlife Review, you've got my review, and you've got... Um, another chapter review on the w1200 and i've also put on the one about the um 18 months update and uh so the chap said thanks very much but what i don't understand now i know people think this is my pet hate because I, I do as well but what i don't understand is why people think that if somebody knows nothing about cassettes this is this is this is my point here if no somebody knows nothing about cassettes and they therefore ask a question like what is this any good why would you then tell that person to go out and buy a second hand thing off ebay which will probably need belts and um rubbers if not changing certainly cleaning and, and stripping down and, and lubricating and having done all that you've got to then put it back together and make it work there's a possibility of needing to do azimuth adjustment, EQ adjustment, speed adjustment, and everything else just to get this vintage deck up to anything. If you look at one of my chat, uh, one of my videos, I've got the vintage deck which I got about two years ago. It's the one. Uh, it, it, it's pretty good actually. It, it's the one. It's a silver one. It's a Toshiba, and it plays. Ah, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. How are you doing? All right. Yeah. Anyway, this this one it plays um, metal tapes and everything. It's, it's pretty good. And I've I've done a couple of videos on it, and I had to change the belts. Now, if somebody is asking about is this cassette deck any good, and it's a perfectly reasonable TAC twelve hundred, but it's obviously not into um, D DIY electronics. Why would you then tell them to go out and buy a, a, basically a DIY electronics project? which is going to cost an absolute fortune to, to put together properly unless you're in the business or, or in the know. I don't understand it. I just don't understand the mentality. What, how is that ever good advice? You know, I, I need to buy something for the wife. I was thinking of buying some perfume. Oh, you don't want to buy perfume. You want to go out and get yourself some rose water and you get yourself some alcohol and you get yourself something else and you mix it all together and you shuffle it about and then you, you boil it up and you do this and you throw some leaves in it and then you put it in. Oh, you've got to learn how to make a good bottle first. And then having made the good bottle, you can then put this stuff in it and she'll be delighted with it and it'll cost you, well, several hours if nothing else. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've got this bottle of, pea smelling water stuff that you, know, you could have just gone out and bought a bottle of, of i don't know chanel number no. five or, or whatever you know just to just or, or gone to boots and bought some number seven um, <laughs> number seven range perfume is it always a good idea to give people all this information that you know all he wanted to know was whether it's worth buying one and the and the reason they were saying no was because they don't know. They don't have one. How could they possibly know? I I forgive you for coming in late. <laughs> Actually, you've just reminded me because I've been going, oh, been going for an hour now. 54 minutes, 36 seconds. Um, yes, thank you, Michelle, for coming in. Uh, and Wasim's been here. He's been holding the fort. I, I was saying earlier on that Kelvin won't be in today because he's working. But um, it's 
next week may be a problem as to what time I'm doing a live. I will be doing a live next week at some point, but uh, got a few things that are are uh, in flux at the moment, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do half past eight on a Wednesday. I hope so, and um, I shall keep you informed. So uh, you have to keep an eye on. You haven't missed much, Michelle. It's uh, really been a case of I've just been wittering on about well the general strike of 1970, um, all the prime ministers we've had, and um, and the fact that people are sometimes rude, if not silly, when they don't actually know what they're talking about. Uh, reference five five angry faces and shouted at that I was wrong when actually I know more about it than he did. But there you go. That's, that's it. So uh, anybody else got, well, now we've got two people. Michelle, have you got anything you'd like to ask, say, speak about? You can, you can do a dialogue if you like. You know, if, you, if you can type quick enough, we'll, we'll have a, we can have a proper go. Or you can just watch. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> It says I've got five people on at the moment, but only two are bothering to put in anything in the comments, in the, in the chat. So the other three, well, one of them's possibly me. So that means there's at least two people that are not doing anything. Come on, type it in. HP. Ah, Bartek E45. Right. My actual main channel, I should just tell you, my main channel is to do with hi-fi electronics and um, general general stuff. I've been involved in various bits of uh, things in life, ranging from engine tuning of cars right the way through to uh, working on CCTV, high-definition TV, colour TV, video recorders, tapes you name it i've probably done it and if i don't then i know and um that includes programming and uh, things like that so the creative the the general thing is a bit of everything and uh, i'm glad you're here my man uh, because I, I i i assume you're actually listening and possibly enjoying what you're hearing um one's just run away i'm down to four now and uh yeah so that's what i'm doing Now, I'm. What, 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 what are we going here? We've got this thing about laptops. Right. Be careful of your battery on a laptop. See my videos on that. And uh, Mich Michelle's got uh, a Lenovo. And yeah. My wife's got a an HP tablet. Um, it's a convertible thing. You, you you open it up. It's the one that we had the battery problem with. You open it up and you can fold it right over, and then you can just use it as a as a tablet. It's a PC, obviously. That's quite good. Yeah, so I'd say it's probably up time for an upgrade. Um, the Lenovo's, I, I, I tell you what, I don't actually know is the simple answer. And I won't give you an opinion. I won't, I won't do what these people do and give you an opinion which is based on nothing. But what I will tell you is this. Do you remember about oh, two years ago, no, 1990, 19, hang on, <laughs> 2019, there was a slight bit of a bug going around. In 2020, we all went into lockdown. And I will just tell you this, that the people who had Lenovo's didn't get online as easily as the people who had HP's and some of the other brands, Aces and whatever. I'm not going to put Lenovo down. In fact, I think they are now involved with the ThinkPad range. But what I will tell you to do is when you're looking at a laptop, make sure you look and understand it because... Quite often they've got some weird things where they, they just don't do what you expect them to. And the problem we had, I was making a thing, um, it was called, we called it a Zoom aid, but we were trying to get people, because my wife was involved in the fitness industry, we were trying to get people online. And there was a guy who was selling mixers and all sorts of things, and 
people were going out and buying laptops and it was all rather rather difficult ah you have an hp desktop as well i don't but we've got we've got uh, three one two my wife's got two i've got one and my daughter's got one hp laptop each um yeah the problem we were having was that you had to get the sound into the computer so that zoom could put it out but what most people were doing was just pointing the speaker at the microphones and that was not working very well it was we had people phone up saying my neighbors are upset because the exercise class music is so loud that uh, it's rattling the walls and, and they're, they're all upset and everything so what we did was actually made a passive um resistor network so it basically put this signal down from line level to mic level and shoved it in the computer or into the uh into the phone via the microphone input as in you know shoved it shoved it in there boom and it worked great and it had a, a knob on it to adjust it so that you could set it to be exactly right because obviously when you're trying to make something for the whole world you have to have different you know different machines have different standards and it was great and uh we it, this was good because it worked on both laptops and pcs and uh desktops and on phones and it even worked on iphones if they had the adapter for the for the plug-in microphones we were only charging 20 quid for it i was up many 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 hours making these damn things having designed it because it had to be compatible with everything so you couldn't just whack it together you had to design it and then whack it together and it was great but the lenovo's were the ones that when people phoned up and said we've got we've got the device everything's great uh except it doesn't work and it was always the lenovo's that were the problem and the only reason it was a problem was because you had the, their version of windows had a separate when you go into sound settings the their version of windows it was sort of like an extra click to get into something so what we normally told people to do was to run um, Audacity. So first thing, download Audacity. Then you could use that as a general input monitoring device system. So if you could get Audacity to record it okay, then you could then switch Zoom on and Zoom would be working okay, which it, which was pretty well right. But with the Lenovo's, we always had the problem that we couldn't get to the controls. And over the phone, trying to explain to somebody how to operate a Windows computer over the phone, is not easy and uh, there are so many clicks and even within the lenovo range there was sometimes more clicks than others anyway that's just 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 a thought so yeah have a look make sure it does what you want it to do um let's see it's very thin i have an hp just the only problem i have with this so far is that it is in s mode which means it will only use apps from microsoft store ah it's to do with the version of Windows. Well, that's interesting. Is that Windows 11 that you've got, that S version? So does that S stand for small, like the um, and Android have a version of um, apps and things? Yeah. Well, that's, do you – now, here's a question. Does anybody here actually like Windows 11? I'm on it. Now we'll see. That that would that would sound like a, a sensible answer, but um, for Michelle, because it, it does sound like it should be able to. How much memory have you got in your in your computer, Michelle? Um, because if it's if it's uh, ah, you can tell, what's the advantage of this mode? That's the question I'd like to answer. Go on, try and sell me a computer with this mode. <laughs> Because if you've only got four gigs of memory, then I suppose S mode might be a good idea. But if you've got eight gigs, you should be okay. Sixteen gigs, you shouldn't shouldn't need it. It's supposed to be faster, safer, safer, faster, and more secure. I never believe any of that. Um, 
I've been having trouble with my editor software. This is why the videos are taking longer to get up this week. Um, they changed something in one of the all the browsers. Have you noticed Windows browsers um, have all changed this week or last week? So if you go on Facebook now, you click on it, it's got a different pop-up window. And uh, if you go on vidIQ and you try and do the tag shuffle, the, the window that you're in just jams up solid. Now, I went to my old machine, which had the old version of the browser on, and it worked fine. And then I went on to this machine, which is got, you know, all singing or dancing, and it's got the new version, and it locked up solid. And that's that's on all the browsers. That's um, I use Opera, Chrome, Edge, and Firefox, and they, they they've all been updated one by one, and they've all got the same fault on them now. And so I went onto this old machine, which was upstairs, which I hadn't been used, my laptop, which I hadn't used for about four weeks. And it was quite happy to work. And then it came up and said, downloaded the latest version of Chrome. I don't know, it's not Chrome, Edge. And uh, so I said, shut it down and open it up. So I did. And then it wouldn't work. And uh, it's really you know, four gig of RAM. That's why, yes, that's why you want to keep your, your S, because at four gigs, you're not going to be able to use much otherwise. Yes, keep it keep it to S. Unless you buy yourself an, an update on the RAM. That amount of RAM is gonna is holding you back. It's uh, a friend of mine who is dearly departed now. Um, he had we're talking back in the Windows I don't know, Windows um, 95, no. I think it was Millennium or something like that. And he was saying it was getting slower and slower and slower on his computer, and he had this this rather nice thing. And, he, and when he said, look, when I try and open Windows, um, when I try and open Word, look how long it takes. And it was taking about 35, 40 seconds to open Word. Uh, so I looked at it, and said, what, what sort of RAM have you got in there? And he said, um, yeah, we had a look, and it was four gigs. So we ordered up. I think it was eight or it was, this was, you know, it was expensive. Um, we ordered up to, um, eight gigs of RAM, put that in. Suddenly his version of Windows was flying and it would open Word. Instead of 40 seconds, it opened it in about 15 seconds. It was actually, although we'd only doubled the RAM, it actually um, taken the speed down by 60%. So... It was you know, the time down by six percent, so it, it was really running. It was flying, and so it's fine. Um, you know, it, if you could get it upgraded, it would be worth it. But on the other hand, if you if you're only using it for if it does what you want, keep it to S mode because you don't want to have the the, the lag that you'd otherwise get. I mean, my I've got I think I've got eight gigs in my laptop. My wife's got sixteen gigs in hers. This works quite well so, but it's uh it's well worth having as much as you can get but it's not necessarily worth buying more it's just one of those things i bought my, my computer second hand my laptop 100 quid no 150 quid and it's got eight gigs and it's what i use for doing the audio in and out of the w1200 that's all i use it for actually it's it's much more capable than that, but I haven't got actually a need for it. It's fine for YouTube, yes. And you come here on it, I'm presuming, so good. You use your desktop for big jobs. Yes, I use my desktop for big jobs. And uh, I've actually got a desktop one sat in front of the telly now because it was the one I was using up until I got this um, Acer which I would recommend, but it would be nice if Windows would be stable. I had problems with this thing where every time I went on YouTube, not YouTube, on Facebook, it was losing itself, and I had to change the I had to update the drivers, which was fun, but that was okay because they were standard drivers. But if you use the Windows drivers, they don't work necessarily. We had trouble with the printer. Not That wasn't down to the computer, but that's down to, again to Microsoft. You you, tell, you plug in the printer, it says, oh, you've got a brother printer, and it puts in 
drivers. And then it prints everything A5 in portrait instead of landscape A4. And it's ridiculous, or, or the other way around. Um, yeah, so you get everything's printed like that instead of that way. It's all printed that way. A5, it's ridiculous. So I had to re reinstall those things. It works now, but it's, it's all a pain in the butt. Why? Why do they keep them changing things when they don't? Okay, they don't work necessarily, but you know, get them right. This software I'm using for the editing, it's a real pain. It's decided it's going to not... My editor now won't take in the software, the files generated by one of the rendering packages I've got, which I've actually spent a lot of money on in order to be able to produce better quality videos. It was working up until last week. They did a modification last week to the rendering pack, and hey, presto, it now doesn't work. And uh, I've now got a query in, but I've spent 150 quid on it. So it would have been nice if it had worked for more than two and a half months. But, yeah, we'll get there in the end, I suppose. Anyway, anything else? Um, the cost of living we've done. Oh, I've got to get my, yeah, no, we won't worry about that another time. I think, unless anybody's got anything else to talk about, I think it's probably about time we went. And hopefully, I shall be back next week at around about the same time. If it's later, is there sort of a t an ideal time? Is there an ideal time for anybody that's currently on there typing in? Because uh, it would be nice to sort of try and find the time that suited people. But other other than that, half past eight on a Wednesday is good then, yeah? Okay, right. Well, I shall leave it at that. If you've got any any um, preferences, about 8 p.m., yeah. Well, I will see what I can do, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. I might end up with what you might call American-friendly time. But uh, if that's the case, then I'll, maybe I'll pick another day because I don't know what's going to happen yet. But... Uh, yeah, anyway, that's been a bit of a rabbit, a bit of a ramble. If there's anything of, of, that you can think of, if you've got any queries, if there's anything that's um, chattable about, then, okay, 8 o'clock's a good time, right? I shall, or 7, yeah, right, okay. I shall try and get back next week. You never know, I might even do some pop-up ones. In which case, if you've if you subscribed, you'll actually get this thing come up saying that I'm actually doing something. In which case, uh, you know, that's good. If you if you've rung the bell, then you'll definitely get a thing saying Gary's gone live. If if you choose to join me, that'd be great. If not, then I'll you know I'll catch you another time anyway. But uh, I'm trying to get these things trying to trying to keep it up to date, and I'm trying to. Well, I'm just trying. Anyway, thank you very much, people. I appreciate you watching on the replay. I appreciate you watching live. Wasim, Michelle, thank you for joining me today. And uh, I, I really do appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't think I'm just saying it. I really do. And I look forward to these now. So catch you another time and keep safe and see you again. I'm going to hit the button now that says bye. Bye-bye. See ya. And it hasn't gone yet. Yes, it has. <laughs>